Welcome to the July the 7th, 1998 taping of a pre-taping for July the 14th, 1998 of It Happened in Grand Prairie, Texas. We're just so pleased today to bring you part of the history of Grand Prairie, Texas and some of the people that helped make that very important history to happen. This is our history tape number 340 and we are very honored today. We have a very special retired, he says he's retired, coach that formerly coached in Grand Prairie, Texas, and we're just so pleased to bring to the dais today Coach Boston P. <laughs> Grant, Jr. Welcome to the set. Thank you, thank you very much. Coach, we are really delighted. We finally have lassoed you long <laughs> enough to get you on this set. Uh, to talk about your wonderful and interesting life, and um, we're so glad to bring this to the uh, to the public, and thank you for sharing with us today. Well, I appreciate the opportunity. All right. First of all, <clears throat> we'd like to uh, do some genealogy with you, and this is your camera. Would you look out and tell us about the real Boston P. Grant of when, where you were born, and name your parents. I was born in San Marcos, Texas. My father was my uh, principal. His name was Boston P. Grant, Sr. And my mother, <clears throat> unfortunately, she passed when I was two years old. Her name was Maggie May Grant. She originally was a Smith. Wonderful. And being uh, born in San Marcos, Texas, uh, uh, where did you go to school as a young man in the San Marcos area? Well, back at that particular time, I went to school at San Marcos, uh, at that time, it was known as San Marcos Negro High School. All right. My father was the principal of the school. That made it nicer, didn't it? <laughs> All I right. don't know. I was a pretty mischievous youngster at that time. Yes. And he used to wear the rear end out I because see. I kept getting into little, you know, little mischievous things that he didn't like. Mm -hmm. And I, his mother raised me, actually. My mother died when I was two. And my grandmother raised me. She's the only mother I knew. Give us your grandmother's name. My grandmother's name was Lizzie E. Grant. Oh, that is wonderful. Yeah. That is so wonderful. And uh, first thing I, I want to say, I, I went back to church. I'm a Methodist. All right. And uh, I was raised in a Methodist church. I had to go to, to prayer meeting because uh, yeah. Mama took me as a little child. I was at every meeting because she was a devout Methodist and she was noted for not having missed an annual conference in some 50 years. Oh, wow, wonderful. And she was 111 when she passed. 111, what a marvelous You know, unfortunately, character. I didn't bring a picture. I had a picture that was in the Morning News, uh, Times Hill, United Press International. Yes. When she, at her 109th birthday. Yes. And she was noted for being able to thread a needle yes. and, you know, she had live all of her children. What a splendid woman. Yeah. All right, now, uh, do you remember any of your favorite teachers at San Marcos in elementary well, school? Well, uh, Mr. Brown, Miss Aula Smith, and uh, of course my dad was one of my favorite teachers as well. All right. Yeah. Okay. He taught, at that time he was the principal, but he taught math. He was a uh, math major, and, and he ended up being a counselor when he retired. Now, uh, Boston, when you finished your elementary school, where did you go to uh, junior high or well, middle school and high school? It was a 12th grade uh, school. And you stayed all of those years? Right there at that one school. Oh, that is mm -hmm. wonderful. All right, let's talk about high school a little bit. When you got on up into the higher grades, was your dad still principal? Oh, yes. All right. I finished. In other words, his name is on my high school diploma. Isn't that splendid? Yeah, yeah, his signature. As a matter of fact, it's, uh -huh. it's hanging on my wall in my little office at the house. All right. Now, where these other pictures were hanging. Yeah, we're, where, where you brought all of this good stuff that we're going to show <laughs> and tell today. Yeah, well. All right, tell us a little bit about high school. When you got on into high school, what were your favorite subjects and, uh, and your athletic career and anything you want to talk about? Well, about uh, I tell you what, my father told me that, and this is, <laughs> this is the truth, he said, BP, that's what he called me, right. and they called me. Uh, he said, you too dumb, and I'm too poor to send you to college. <laughs> All right. I was supposed to be awkward, but he was trying to make a man out of me. Yes. 
and he'd say the little disparaging things, you know, yeah. to try to spur me on. Yeah. And every time I'd do something, I was trying to make him out of a lie to show him that he was wrong. That you could do it. And uh, I ran track in high school, and I was pretty good, I guess. Yeah. At least I thought I was. Yes. And then I went into service, and I ran in service, and then came out and went to college. All right. Now, what part of the service did you serve in? I served in, uh, uh, well, I was in Camp Stewart, Georgia. Camp Stewart, Georgia. That was a long way from San Marcos. Uh, wasn't it? <laughs> oh. And, of course, that... Uh, there and, you know, the training that I got helped to make a man out of me. All right. And, of course, basically all I did, I was in special service, and I was in, uh, well, I learned, I took typing before I even went to college, and I was a uh, company clerk and this type thing. But I stayed on special detached service running track. So I, I ran track all, practically all over all over the world. That was wonderful. Mm -hmm. All right. And then after you got out of the service, uh, where did you go to college? I went to Prairie View. To Prairie View. Mm -hmm. Okay. What, you going to tell us what year you graduated from Prairie View? Is well, that important? I got my master's down there in 1973. 19 Incidentally, I, I can show you here. This is a picture here of uh, my uh, sprint relay that Let's I ran hold on. That up. Let's hold that right up under your tie. That's the sprint relay that I ran on. On that picture, you have Ural Davis, Francel Reese, Matthews Clay, and myself. Now, I wasn't the anchor man. I'm on the end. Clay was the anchor man. He was the fastest of the group. I was the second fastest. At the time, I thought I was pretty good. Lewis, we'd like uh, you to uh, give a center camera so maybe we can get a little better shot of this, of these four young men, with your permission. Oh, yeah, now that's a lot better, isn't it? See up there on our monitor? We aren't too glossy that, uh, and these, you four young men, where did y'all run track? At Prairie View. At Prairie View, did yeah. you win any champions? Or, yeah, well, we, or we won, we won, we lost one sprint relay, and my coach talked about us, because uh, we weren't supposed to lose, we lost to Grambling. I see. At the uh, Tuskegee Relays. All right. But we, toured all over the country. Mm -hmm. And now, let me say this. In my high school tenure as a coach, my high school teams ran much faster than... Than you all did. Than my, my college team, oh yeah. Oh yes, all right, now at Prairie View, do you have any favorite professors or teachers or anyone uh, you'd Dr. like to mention? Dr. J.L. Brown, who was the head of the uh, Department of Business Administration. Yes. He was one of my favorite teachers. And, oh, great. Uh, coach, coach w Billy Nix. Right. He's, he's the one who brought me to Prairie View All right. on scholarship down there. And uh, oh, I, I owe quite a bit to Prairie View. That's great. Because I met my wife down there. All right, now we're going to get to talking about that right now. <laughs> At Prairie View, you got more than an education, didn't you? You got a, yeah, a, a wonderful wife. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more uh, about Dora Jean. Uh, Dorothy Jean Grant, yeah. Dorothy, uh, I met her through one of her one of her roommates, uh, who was a friend of a friend of mine. All right. And uh, yeah, you may note that I wear boots, and everybody yes. knows because I wear boots all the time. Well, I used to wear some little, well, they weren't cowboy boots, but uh, I wore little shortcut boots. All right. And I thought military I Military boots. Well, kind of like a military I don't, boot? I don't, no, they were just, had little tassels on them. I thought oh, that was kind of slick. Oh, yes. Yeah. And I'd like to say this, my father, uh, he used to ask the fellas, I've been wearing glasses for a long time, and yeah. I used to think that the glasses would make me stand out a little more. And Dad asked some of the fellas, hey, fellas, BP, is BP on drugs or something like that? I said, no, prof. But uh, I've been wearing glasses for a long time, tinted lens, and now I can't see without them. Oh, yes. <laughs> All right. Any other favorite uh, stories about college? Well, uh, I, Tell us I was bit. able to graduate. I made the uh, honor roll one time. That was my, see, I wasn't a genius by any means. All right. But uh, I did what was asked of me. I passed. And you got I found out that I couldn't go to college and run track, play football. Mm -hmm. I found out that I had to get some lesson as well. That's right. So, and uh, what was your major? Business administration. Most people think, say, he's a coach. Well, he's PE. 
No, I was no. See, my father gave me a series of tests, I see. battery of tests, uh, checking out where my aptitudes were and yes. my interests were highest in, since yeah. he was a counselor. And it was in business. Now, unfortunately, my dad didn't have any money. That's all right. And, and when I got out of school, we couldn't go into any type of business because at that time, never no business loans, uh, small loans, yes. and this type of thing. So I uh, ended up teaching. All and right. he told me, this, that's the last thing you want to do, fellas, poor as we are. Where is your first job teaching? My first job teaching was in East Texas, a little town by the name of Groveton. I left Austin. Uh, this is where my father ended up living in Austin. In Austin, Texas. Mm -hmm. When he passed. <clears throat> he was teaching there, and he had retired. I left Austin going to Groveton, and the population of Groveton, when I got there, I was totally surprised. 909. Yes. Little bitty town deep in East Texas, outside of Huntsville, out from off a of highway, out from 59, from Crockett mm -hmm. and Lufkin. All right. And were I you, taught that one year. Were you married at this time? Uh, I married after. You married after you had started teaching school. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, you and Dorothy Jean uh, have not met yet. So what, where'd you go next? Um, I left that. Well, we, we met in college. But I, that's after I finished. Yes. And then I went to uh, Sealy. We married before I went to Sealy. We married in 19... Oh, quite a few years back. All right. And All we, right. We won't even discuss that. Yeah, we won't discuss that. Well. But anyway, we married, and Michael was born. All right. Michael is your firstborn. That's right. All right. And where's Michael now? Michael, uh, he's in Dallas. He lives in Carrollton. He built him a nice home out there. Yeah. Mike works for the Federal Reserve Bank. All right. He's a mainframe computer operator. Now, Michael finished Grand Prairie High School, played football. He was a golfer. Mm -hmm. All right. And ran track for Dave Easterling. All right. And uh, Bill Young. Okay. Who was a football coach at the time. And mm -hmm. I didn't interfere. Yes. Mike was a tremendous punt at Grand Prairie High School and receiver. He and Mike Presley was a quarterback and at the time, and Mike was one of his receivers. I only saw him play about three games. I guess so. You you are at everywhere I'm, we can I'm tie coaching. you down. You no, are. I was, I was out of town coaching myself. All right, uh, Michael is your first son. Who is your second child? Uh, Phyllis. Phyllis. Let's show and tell Phyllis, shall we? Yes. Um, we're going to ask Mr. Tovar to get the center camera one more time. You want to help me hold Phyllis steady here so we can get okay. her on this? Now that's yeah. Miss Phyllis, and who's that baby? Oh, that's that's at uh, Bragg Ridge Hospital where she works. Where she works. That's she's, one of her patients, isn't it? That's one, one of her patients. All right. Phyllis, uh, she started out, she finished University of Texas School of Nursing. All right. And uh, was she, she finished Grand Prairie High. Was she a go? She was uh, in the band. All right. And uh, she, she finished high school with straight A's. Oh, my. But now she wasn't number one in her class. I think she ranked like about 20 or 21st. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many. But she had straight A's. Did she get a scholarship, or do you have to pay uh, money no, to send that kid she, to college? We, my wife and I, we had to send her. Uh huh. That's good. She, but she didn't want to go to Prairie View. She wanted to go to Austin. Yes. She wanted to go to University of Texas. So we had to honor her request. Oh yes. All right. And she didn't disappoint us. Where is she now? She's uh, she's uh, working at Bragg and Ridge Seton Hospital in Austin. All right. And uh, she's. Uh, Nurse, uh, nurse manager. She started out as head, assistant head, assistant head nurse, and head nurse, and she was promoted to nurse manager in 1994. Yes. And uh, that makes big bucks, doesn't it? Oh yeah, she. Yeah. She's up to out. My brother, who lives in San Antonio, I worked for him this past year. He has a big tax service. Out Would you there. name your brother? His name is Ray L. Grant. Ray L. Grant. He has Grant Enterprise there in San Antonio. All right. Do you have yeah. any other brothers? Just he and my sister. Sisters right. in Austin. Who is your sister? Uh, Deloria Grant. Deloria Grant. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you have a bunch down in Austin, and here you are way off up here in Grand Prairie. But <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, my home is here now, and I'm, all right. tell I'll me, be here. Tell me what brought you to Grand Prairie, Texas. Uh, David Daniels. David Daniels. And I, I owe, and he's deceased now, but I owe everything to that man. And I think a whole lot of other people will attest to that fact as well because he was Mr. Grand Prairie for us, I was concerned. Was he the And principal? he was like a father figure. He, yes. David Daniels was everything. Let's see if we can, uh, we can get 
we have a picture we're going to use at the end of our show to run our credits. Let's hold this one up with me and let's mm -hmm. see if we can get Mr. Tovar to clue in on this one. Um, I think David Daniels is in there. Right there he is right mm -hmm. there. And point out you over in that white coat. Boy, that's a joke. That's <laughs> that you in the white coat. Yeah. And David Daniels on the top row on this other side. Right, right. Do you see any other famous people at the school where you were there that you'd like to point out? Well, uh, any, any of the coaches? Well, there's uh, Coach Reed. All right. You had Coach Brown on your show. I yes, saw that. Yes, you did. Okay. Some time ago. Coach Jackson is deceased. Yes. Coach Reed lives right down the street from me. Uh huh. And uh, he's I'm, how I got in touch with you. Huh? He's oh, yeah. how I got in touch. Oh, got okay. your phone number. Uh huh. Yes. And uh -huh. that young man now, he was my first state champion. That's Charlie Taylor. That's Charlie Taylor. Uh -huh. He was your first state champion. He won the hurdles from in 1960. Oh, isn't I don't that great? Telling that. That's a long time ago. Yep. Yes. And now he's a Hall of Famer, former, one of the great Redskins. great football player, Washington Redskins. Yes. And, uh, I'm proud of the fact that oh. he's one of my ex-athletes. Oh, we have something on the back here. We, oh. want, we wanted to show and tell, too. Okay. While, uh, uh, Louis, I don't know whether we can get this one or not. It's, it's pretty dim. But tell us who these are, uh, anyhow. Well, this is uh, Jimmy Smith. Uh, that's Coach Brown from East Texas State University. And that's Don Mitchell. He has Mitchell's Barber Shop there on 303 here. He's successful. In Grand Prairie, Texas. Yeah, here in Grand Prairie. All right. And that's me. All and, right. And uh, one young man who's not pictured is Joe Jones, Joe Turkey Jones. That's Charlotte Taylor's half-brother. Okay. Uh, Joe was also one of my state champions on the state championship. These fellas were on two successive state championship teams, uh, along with Melvin Carraway and, and uh, Terry Pruitt. Yes. Terry Pruitt is a successful businessman here in Grand Prairie as well. Yes, he who is. Who finished high school. All right. Um, this is Grand Prairie. We're going to, before we get to all of those uh, pictures we're going to show and tell, I want to know about all of the Hall of Fames that you're in and this recent one that you're nominated for. Tell us about those. Oh, you? well, I was inducted in the Prairie View Hall of Fame in 1995. And uh, two weeks later, and that's my school, Two weeks later, I was inducted into the Golden South Hall of Fame in Orlando, Florida. Oh, great. And uh, I was inducted in the TAAC Hall of Fame several years ago. And that's Preview, ex Preview Coaches Association. All right. And uh, uh, some other. Uh, I tell, didn't... tell us about this nomination. That's the one I'm interested in. Oh, uh, this here, I, I'll show you the newsletter here. It's the. Uh, uh, United States Track Coaches Association newsletter. Okay. And that's in 97. They had a meeting there in, in Dallas this past year. Yes. And I was nominated. I didn't even know anything about it, along with, oh, uh, I say Ted Banks, who's a very good friend of mine in Riverside, California. He's first on the list. Uh, uh, Harry Groves, uh, Bob Geenbeck from, he's deceased. Uh, Bill Easton from Kansas. Uh, Ken Doherty from uh, uh, well, from uh, he's deceased also. Bill mm -hmm. Dellinger from Oregon. Quite a few famous coaches. But we're going to work on this next time, aren't we? Well, uh, we, we, they told me that I would eventually be in, inducted. Well, it's right. an honor to me yes. to even have the opportunity to yes. get. Yes. All right. Now, now this this picture here is the first one of my first teams here in Grand Prairie. All right, name yeah. that first team if there's any uh, of those you can name Let me see, for. this is Eddie Redman, Henry Hill, this is a, uh, uh, yeah boy, this is out of state. Uh, Billy Crane, and Curly Hill, and uh, Washington, oh my goodness. Can't even think of all these kids' names. And this is you? Yeah, that's me. All right. And this is my trainer. Who is your trainer? I've forgotten his name. All right, that's Little okay. Little buddy, I believe that's what they call him. All right. No, this is Ed Washington here. All right. Ed. And this was your first team in Grand Prairie, Texas? Uh-huh. All right. Where were you teaching then? At Dalworth? Dalworth, yeah. At Dalworth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we're going on up into the years, and what year was this? And uh, this oh. is uh, the 82 state championship team. Uh, From where? Uh, South Oak Cliff High School. That's me there. That's one of my assistants. Leonard Grant, no relation. And that's Coach McKinney, who just retired this year. This young man here is Roderick Jones, 
who was a number one draft choice for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He finished SMU. Uh, uh, Cornelius Dozier, he went to SMU. Michael Cannon, who was a six-time All-American, one of my great, ex-great athletes that I'm very proud of. He went to TCU, uh, All-American now several times. Uh, this young man was a scratch man on my relay. This ran hurdles. This is Egypt Allen. He played with the Chicago Bears. And uh, William Reed. And you're in the blue suit. I'm in the blue suit. All right. How long did you teach at this school? Uh, 18 years. 18 years. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, this looks like some good looking folks. Now, uh, that's the uh, state my relay championship. All right. You, do you know any of those? Yeah, this is William Reed, Michael Cannon. Egypt Allen and Roderick Jones. All right, and you're See, in a white suit there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and all of that was while you were with South Oak Cliff? All right. Okay. Now, mind you, we, we won two state championships in Grand Prairie before we got to South Oak Cliff. All right. I knew you wanted to brag about Grand Prairie and yeah, South yeah, Oak Cliff. Yeah, well, All right, and, and who is this? Because my kids in Grand Prairie would jump on me if I don't say something about them. You bet. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's Michael Cannon. He made the United States junior team, and he was a world record holder on that team as well. And you're standing there mighty proud. Oh yeah, I feel pretty good. And, and that was at South Oak Cliff? South Oak Cliff, yes. Okay, now we're gonna show and tell these um, on the back and tell me where you were and what was happening at this point. Uh, this was an annual meet that they have at SMU and uh, uh, knowing that I was retiring in 1986 from coaching, uh, they honored me at SMU on that particular day. And so you can see that they clapping for me here. And, yeah. And, uh, they, and this guy that took the picture here, he says, salute to the master coach. Oh, great, And great. The, the photographer, Kurt Newberry, ran for Highland Park. He was, a, a, he was supposed to be our special uh, cameraman. You know, he followed us everywhere. Everywhere you went? Uh, well, we, I guess we were pretty fortunate. We were winning. You know, when, you, when you're winning, and they'll follow you. That's a little they? dust doing that. All right, we don't mind the dust. I'm just glad you brought all this good yeah. stuff with you. All right, now here's another South Oak Cliff. Yeah, I that's Arthur Williams. He's uh, all American in basketball and all American in track. He went to A&M. He was a tremendous quarter miler. What all did you coach at South Oak Cliff? I coached football and track. Football and yeah, track. Yeah, I had Michael Downs who uh, played for the Cowboys for several years. He was one of my hurdlers. Oh, he was. Mm -hmm. All right, we're getting down into the the very last of the pictures of our show in Yeah, uh, this young man here is uh, one of the greatest milers ever to come out of the uh, North Texas region. This is Kenneth Talbot. He ran like 4, 12, 6 in a mile. That's a mile run back when he was, this is 1975. Yes. And uh, he was also state cross country champion. All right. I like to think that, you know, when somebody's talking, they say, well, you coach sprinters. No, I coach whatever necessary. Yes. Coach where the talent is. You bet. And then develop it. And who is this other young man? This young man is Luther Jones. He was a long jumper. He's state champion. All right. And the other uh, young man that jumped with him, they finished one tour at the state. He's deceased. Now, he got his neck broken in a car wreck. Oh, my. Yeah. Can, have you ever figured up how many state champions you have coached? Not really. Individual champions, no. I've had quite a few, several, uh, quite a few in South Oak Cliff and here as well. Grand Prairie. Mm -hmm. We're going to give you that assignment now, Boston. We want <laughs> you to come up with how many state champions you had as teams well, and I as, can in, tell you, as four, individuals. Four championship teams. Four cha championship teams, but individuals, wouldn't you say there's more than 20? Uh, somewhere in that neighborhood. Somewhere in that I had, uh, so, uh, we, well, we counted up something like 70-something All-Americans. What are you doing now? Uh, presently, I'm teaching inmates at the uh, Jesse Dawson State Jail. All right. And, uh, and I'm you, fixing what? to start a track team at Paul Quinn College. Maybe we'll get a little publicity in that. Yeah, uh, let's talk. My former athletic director, John Kincaid, uh, talked to me and uh, last year and we were talking about and I can bring in a quality group of young men and this will help these kids get through school Good. and uh, put Paul Quinn on the map. All right now what are you teaching in the uh, the inmates? I'm teaching uh, life skills 
uh, was teaching GED. I'm teaching life skills now yes. to them. And hopefully they can be productive and get out and not come back. Oh, that sounds wonderful. All right, now I need to know, what were you doing at North Texas about three years ago when I tried to get you to come on this show and you said, <laughs> I, oh, I'm was, so busy was, at North I Texas. I was coaching uh, track. I coached there from 90 to 96. 90 to 96. And, uh, and in 96, my, uh, my relay team won the conference. Yes. And, you know, I believe in winning. Yes. And then... And, now, this last spring, you were coming here about January, February, and then you got this call from Austin from your brother. What did you do then? Well, I went down there to, to well, I was cashing checks. Good. In his business. I see. And this past year, I cashed $2,058,000 worth of checks. That's, your math came in handy, didn't it? <laughs> well, had quite a bit of money. All right, we have a couple of minutes left on the show. I want you to look over toward Mr. Tovar and I'd like for you to look out and just say something to the young people about how important it is that they follow their star. Well, uh, I'd like to tell the youngsters, if there are any watching, that you can't lose by staying in school, getting your education, and staying away from drugs, alcohol, mm -hmm. tobacco, what have you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Live a clean life. Yes. It's, being in jail is no fun. I'm teaching those inmates down there. They're locked up. There was only one person we forgot to mention, and that's your son, Charles. Char oh, my goodness. Let's talk about Charles Char for half a second. Charles, Charles is at home. Uh, was he a gopher? He's a gopher as well. He played football, and uh, he was a tremendous artist. But Charles, unfortunately, he had a physical handicap, and he's, he's at home. He's been ill. He's doing all right. Good. All right, and, and Miss Dorothy is giving you a lot of support because she's the one that helps me keep track of you. <laughs> I yeah. want to really thank you, well, um, thank you Coach really Grant. Good. It's been wonderful to go through uh, just a short part of your life. Um, there are just many things, that uh, contributions that you've made. And well, I hope I've made some difference. Oh, I'd like to mention this now. All right. Uh, there are some young men that I've coached probably haven't been as successful as others. Yes. But uh, I look back when they closed Dalworth, I had to have a job. So I coached in Wilma Hutchins and one of the young men that I got a scholarship to UTA through my contacts, Royce West, he's now state senator. Yes. A big time lawyer. Yes. And uh, another young man that I coached when I first came into da Dallas, Hyam Bellison, who's uh, at the police academy. Yes. And then I have another young man who I went to his wedding a couple weeks ago, Victor Proctor, who I saw through college, went to his graduation out at, as a matter of fact, Coach Miller and myself uh, drove out to his graduation. Mm -hmm. So I like to see the kids come out. That's wonderful successes. <clears throat> we want to really thank you for sharing that with us. Well, thank you, uh, And thank, thank you for the time you've given us today and for opening your life to us. And this is Ruthie Jackson reminding you that history is as we live and do. Thank you so much. Thank you.